In this video, we're going to be talking about the major stress points that you'll face when you are scaling a short rental business. So stay tuned. Vacation Rental Machine helps hosts just like you learn how to start, grow, and scale your short-term rental business. This show is all about creating systems that help you automate your business, giving you more time and money freedom. If you're ready to start living the vacation rental life, then subscribe to this podcast today. Come and join us on our Facebook group, The Host Nation, where we'll be talking about starting, automating, and scaling a short-term rental business. Now, on to the show. Hey, welcome back, Host Nation, to another episode of Vacation Rental Machine. I'm Julian Sage with John Bell. And in the last episode, we were talking about when is the right time to quit your job. And in that episode, we were talking about some of the different stress points that you'll face and how you can actually you know, keep on growing your business. But at certain points, you will have to overcome these obstacles. And in this video, we're talking about what those obstacles are. Do you really need to quit your job? Or can you just fix these simple things, these things that, you know, do take a little bit of a learning curve, but once you do learn it can save you a lot of stress and a lot of time. So this is going to be a very actionable and powerful video for you. So John, when you are scaling your business, what is the first stress point that most hosts face when they are starting to acquire additional properties? You know, even before you get additional properties, you might find a stress point just messaging. Messaging is probably one of the first stress points that you actually hit. And even coming down to writing reviews before I used to just, you know, copy the same review and paste it. I was actually like handwriting and typing all of these individual reviews and it just became a burden. So that was one of the first things that kind of became, Ugh, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, it's, I'm sending the same stuff over and over again and it's just taking too much time. How I resolved that stress point was I introduced Smart b, &B. Once I introduced Smart b, b that cut down my messaging literally by hours a week because I no longer had to send those scheduled messages out for people to know how to check in. I could even go a little overboard and send extra messages while they're there and just not even know that they're technically going out. My messages could create extra revenue. So all of that stuff comes in after you add in something to just alleviate that one stress point. And that's just the first one that you hit. So don't freak out. Don't think you need to just quit and sit on the couch and just message people all day because it's not going to be worth it. Not when it costs you just a little bit of money just to get a tool to do that. Right. And if you'd like to learn more about how to use Smart BNB or just more information on how to be able to automate that process, then definitely subscribe to this channel because we will be coming out with additional content for Smart BNB. So messaging being the first stress point, once you've relieved the messaging stress point, what's the second stress point that most people face? So the next stress point that you'll probably hit is trying to speed up your cleaning practices and being able to clean a unit before the check-in window and cleaning multiple units in that same check-in window with the same crew. What I found is for me, after I reached about seven units or more, it was a time for me to pull out the linens that I had at each property and put them into a centralized hub, being able to then just push things out from there that were clean and receive the dirty back there just allowed us to clean each unit within 45 minutes or a little bit less depending on the size of the place. Now, granted, that's not a three bedroom home, but for most of the apartments, they were cleaned within that time, which increased the efficiencies of the cleaners and allowed them to commute or go to multiple units without me adding a new crew. All of that stuff got a lot easier once you actually pull the stuff out of each unit. You also realize that you need less linens when you do that. And that leads us right into uh, the next one, which is laundry, which is the next biggest pain point. And if you're like me, uh, you're washing 300 to 400 pounds of laundry a week and you just can't do that yourself. So the next thing is trying to find either a service or a person that is consistently focused on laundry. For most of us, that means finding a wash and fold that can pick up from this centralized hub and drop off to that same location after everything is washed and pressed and all of that stuff. Once that's done, that alleviates one of the 
biggest and the heaviest thing that you have to deal with. All right, John. So we've relieved the messaging stress point. We've moved on to around that seven unit mark where you're trying to efficiently clean. Maybe now you're removing the linens, trying to put it to a centralized hub. But now you have reached a point where you are dealing with maybe uh, more properties. Maybe now you have around 15 properties or so dealing with a lot of laundry, lots and lots of laundry. But now you also have a team that is helping you. So what is the uh, fourth stress point? You know, the fourth stress point is you're probably going to break people. And that's not a bad thing. It just shows that you are growing and that people either didn't scale with you. I'll just add this personal story to it. I started out with this one cleaner who was amazing. A little OCD, a little overly detailed, but could produce things that were like squeaky clean, perfect, perfect towel folds. Everything was perfect. I even wanted to create a new line of just my same offerings, just cleaned by her because they were just above anybody's standard. Phenomenal. Because this person did not scale with me, as I added on units, they could not keep up with ca the capacity. And when it got too stressful, her cleaning started to degrade. I started to get in some four stars on her units where I was very surprised because her standard was normally super, super, super above a five star. But it became very hard for her to go from one unit to the next unit, to go to the centralized storage unit to pick up and drop off, to do all of these other things because she didn't build a team around herself. And it's okay when somebody doesn't do that. You just have to know you are running a business. And when you're running a business, you have to say goodbye to those people and move on to somebody that can support you in your current growth. And you cannot spend your wheels trying to build their business along with yours. So you're going to break people. You're going to break your team. You're going to either hire an assistant and that assistant not be the perfect fit. You're going to run through these things and it's a pain point, but that doesn't mean you have to quit your job just to go resolve this one thing. You just need to figure out a way to find the right person to add into your team. So now, John, we've resolved the messaging. We've taken out the cleaning. We've handled all of the laundry and now our team is a little bit more rock solid what is the next pain point that you face when you are starting to scale this short-term mental hospitality business all right so the next pain point while scaling is you've built this business based on stuff that you can either manage yourself apps that you can use and look at things yourself um tools that you have access that you do all by yourself. Well, when you start growing, you're going to have to offload certain things. For me, that came in with the door lock system. So as I tell everybody to go in and use August when they start, because it is the best product that you can actually buy off the shelves and use that connects to Airbnb, which is normally the primary platform for most of you guys. And it does a good job of getting people codes and access to the place. But when you start to scale, when you start to add in multiple platforms, when you're doing your direct booking, you have to create those codes outside of Airbnb. And August isn't perfect every time, even with going through Airbnb. It doesn't always send the codes. Doesn't, people don't always get the emails. You're going to have to alleviate that bottleneck. And for me, that was adding in a service that took care of that, which added an efficiency to my business that allowed me not to be worried about looking for a code to send this person or creating a code or sending an invite. I no longer have to do that. I know it's resolved because I have this one tool that does this one thing very well. And it also helps in reducing the cost that the electricity is being pulled, the AC settings when people are not in the unit. It sets that to a higher temperature. So I'm not just set down to 68 degrees because the guests came in and they set it to 68 degrees and they have vacated and the days are open for two days before the next guest comes and your AC is blaring that whole time. 
stuff like that, little tweaks to where you can say, hey, I did this, it saved me this. That's where your focus needs to get as you start to scale. When you start to really look at everything from a dollar perspective and say, hey, if I spend maybe a little bit more, I won't have to replace this one thing. If I spend a little bit more, I won't have to worry about this redundant task. That's what your next pain point is. So, John, you would probably say that you're at around this fifth pain point. Uh, so, you know, having around 50, 40 properties, you've been able to scale past all these other previous pain points. What do you see being the next pain point for you? You know, it's still going to be around that efficiency. That's going to be an ongoing pain point. No matter how much you grow, how much you tweak, uh, the more you grow, the more you start to stress old systems. So the next pain point that you're always going to want to focus on is just processes. You're going to have to tweak processes and efficiencies at the same time. Sometimes you're just going to have to just swipe everything and say, hey, I'm at this scale at this point. It's no way possible for it to work any way that I built it so far. With that, that might mean you do some vertical movements inside of your business. That might mean, hey, I spend too much money washing my stuff. I should buy a laundromat. I go buy a laundromat. I alleviate some of my pain points there. I now can offer a service to somebody else. And I'm able to make revenue from something that was a pain point or something that cost me more money. When you add processes and efficiencies into that same scope, you start thinking like that that vertical movement to alleviate stuff that way. How can I make my pain make me money? Adding that to your business, very smart. So for those of you that are listening to this episode, this is a really powerful one because a lot of people think that they could just get started in short term rentals and then they'll just start picking up a bunch of properties, they'll make a bunch of money and then they can you know, live free, retire early, whatever it is. Uh, but lots of people get started in this business and maybe you can manage one to three properties okay. But do you really want to grow a short term rental, a hospitality business? Is this really what you are looking to do? Because you could hire a manager, you could hire, you know, people like John and I to that have already moved past those stress points and can ease the burden off of you. Or you can do this yourself and you can learn how to be able to move past these stress points, use the systems and the tools that are available and build a business off of that. But this really is a business. And regardless of what business you're doing, there's always going to be pain points along the way, whether you are wholesaling, whether you are a small business owner, whether whatever it is, you're always going to be hitting certain pain points. These are just some of the particular pain points that you will be facing if you are scaling a short term rental business, whether that is through co-hosting, uh, buy and hold or rental arbitrage and master lease investing. Each different model is going to have, you know, different types of pain points that you might face, such as, you know, do you have the ability to, you know, get enough capital to purchase multiple properties? If you're managing properties, do you have the efficiencies or the process, the system to be able to acquire uh, clients and be able to onboard them the right way? Or do you have the efficiency of the process, you know, hitting that pain point for you to be able to acquire more master lease properties and be able to onboard them efficiently? All of these different ones are going to have different pain points. But what we covered in this episode are going to be some of the common ones, regardless of which way you end up scaling your short term rental business. These are going to be common pain points that you will also face. So the question for you today is this. What do you really want with your short term rental business? Are you looking for something that is hands off? Are you looking to build a short term rental business or do you just kind of want to relax and have somebody else uh, basically manage and do that for you? So if you're listening to this episode and you're looking to move past those pain points, then I'd encourage you to go on over to shorttermsage.com backslash VRMF, VRMF, and you can join our coaching program where we'll help you actually move past these pain points together. So we'll give you the tools, the systems, the processes, everything that you need to be able to move past a lot of these pain points that you will be facing if you are just starting off. And that's why this is such a unique program, the Vacation Rental Machine Formula, because it really is a process. This is 
use a framework for you to be able to grow your short term rental business. Now, this isn't for everybody. If you don't really plan on scaling this business, this, this program will definitely teach you how to be able to manage one or three properties yourself. And it will give you everything that you need to be able to move past your first pain points, your second pain point. But if you're really looking to take this to another level that I encourage you because we will be doing, uh, we do have live coaching in there where you can ask questions with John and I, uh, or if this doesn't sound interesting to you at all, you can also go on over to cohostit.com and we would be happy to help you to be able to scale your business for you. Until next time, Host Nation, keep on hosting. If you'd like John and I to answer your guys' questions, then be sure to go to the Host Nation Facebook group and use hashtag AskVRM. Hope you hosts found value in this episode. If you did, please go on over to iTunes and leave us a review as that would greatly support the show. If you'd like to connect with John, the community, and I, then go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation. Talk to you hosts in the next episode. Keep on hosting.